I suppose I ought to confess that uh, I have been a pornographer, uh, completely failed, uh, wanted to replace the agenda of screw with a non-sadistic agenda of suck. We produced seven numbers, I think, of our magazine in Amsterdam. And as a way of changing its uh, sadistic exploitation of, of young people uh, who posed willingly for us naked, I suggested that all of us ugly old editors should be photographed naked. The only one of us who had any kind of public profile was me, so I had to think hard about how to do the photograph, and I had to make sure that it couldn't be ripped off by the commercial soft porn industry, so uh, I had already explained to Playboy, who offered me a gatefold, that I would do it if I could stand with my back to the camera and look at the lens through my knees. It took them a while to figure that out. <laughs> because, as usual, they'd forgotten that women have anuses. You might have noticed that. Um, and so they said they thought they weren't ready for that. But Suck was ready for that, and I did do it. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't change the iron reality of what is, as has been explained, a business. My fellow editors used the picture as page three. They blew it up to the full broadsheet size. They cut uh, a signature off one of my letters, pasted it on the bottom as if it was a piece of gratuitous exhibitionism on my part. And they were never photographed themselves. What I was trying to do then was to change pornography. I was trying to make it not sadistic. I don't know that we can do this until we liberate human sexuality. Most of its expression will be sadistic. And commercial porn is no different. It's predicated on, pre on penetration. Whether the penetration is of m women, men, or animals, or children, the person who is penetrated is degraded by the interaction. Until we actually change our own sexual culture, we can't change that. We can't change that by pretending that it's been changed. The motion, in my view, is upside down. Pornography doesn't make us less repressed. Pornography is a way of making money out of the fact that we are repressed. Not for nothing is the cum shot known as the money shot. Pornography, we get confused when we talk about it as a style or a genre. I'm in favor of erotic art. I am desperate to find a way to reincorporate sexuality in the narrative that we give of our lives, and it's virtually impossible, because for some reason, it gets hived off into this special realm. Pornography is not a style or a genre, it's a business. The target customer, regardless of whether the depicted act involves women, men, children or animals, is male. The need for pornography arises from our sexual incapacity. Now, I'm not going to do a men are from Mars and women are from Venus number here, but we have a problem of misunderstanding each other and having sexualities that are not symmetrical. Pornography perpetuates the stereotypic notion of sexual intercourse as essentially penetrative. The penis is rock hard, even though in most of the porn films I've seen, and I was a judge at the Wet Dream Film Festival in Amsterdam in 1972, <laughs> in most of the films I've been made to watch, the penis is distinctly rubbery. Now that we have video, hard disk video cameras that can record seven hours without changing the mag, maybe it's not as rubbery as it used to be. Maybe we can actually stay with it till we get to the money shot. But the other problem is that the behaviour of the female, usually in these interactions, has been laid down God knows when. I've also been a judge of video discs made by celebrities in which 
practically every woman made the little animal cries the <laughs> that say your cock is giving me as much pleasure as it's giving you which is a lie <laughs> quite the most tragic of these fairly tragic items was the one made by the very successful woman now known as Katie Price. It was quite the saddest porn video I think I've ever seen. Now, if we're talking about how people learn how to take care of each other, one of the big problems with the porn that teenagers are watching is it doesn't give any importance to the condom. It doesn't bring it into the interaction, probably because it's practically impossible. Uh, we pretend that everything's going fine because we don't know how often the morning after pill is required. We don't know how many of our young women are having unprotected sex. We know they all think it's a long-term partner and we know that they're nearly always wrong. But even subtler than that is the fact that pornography fetishizes the body. Now, it may be great to be told, look, you're an amputee, put in amputee plus porn, and you'll discover that there's a bunch of people out there who get off on your stump. <laughs> that isn't going to be frightfully good news. What you're hoping is that they get off on you. You don't want to be told that you now have become a subclass of a fetish. Likewise, you've got one breast three times bigger than the other. You really want someone to make love to you for that reason? Women always believe it's love. They always rely on words. One of the things about pornography is that it's mostly speechless. The thing you remember is not what was done, but what was said. Pornography postulates limitless male potency, which can't be arrived at in the real world. But the really sinister thing about it is that it makes sex easy. It is the psychological equivalent of convenience food. It provides easy, ready-made fantasy to be used in the mechanical relief of sexual tension. The relief is superficial. Masturbation is like housework. It's only to be done again. Repetitive, meaningless. Like convenience food. You stuff food in your mouth whenever you think you might want it, but it doesn't satisfy. You are never replete, you are never hungry. Real encounters carry with them the possibility of rejection, of humiliation, of being deceived, exploited, of being impotent. They are adventures. Sex is a blood sport. We approach each other with trepidation. As intimacy intensifies, the possibility of hurt becomes greater. We encounter jealousy, the most debilitating illness of all. Pornography is your paper doll, the gal that other fellows cannot steal. Pornography won't betray you, it won't dump you. Sex is as difficult as conversation, with as great a propensity for going wrong. Pornography replaces the uncertainty of real encounters with real people with stereotypical fantasy. Relief of tension is assured, but ecstasy is out of reach, out of sight unimaginable. Passion is a concept emptied of significance. Commitment is not an issue. The sexual revolution didn't liberate sex, it liberated pornography. Ready-made sexual fantasy appeared on every bookstand. A huge industry developed, much huger, I think, than we realize. Pornography is part of the marketing of prostitution, and it bleeds back into real life. Reality becomes an unpleasant surprise. Little girls are trying to assuage the anxieties of their young boyfriends. They're desperate to have a full Brazilian aged 13. We need not commercial pornography, which exists to suck the money out of pockets of men, but an integration of carnality in the narrative of daily life. We need to rediscover or maybe reinvent intimacy.